So far the small dust collector consists of the blower, the cyclone separator and the wooden bucket. And the components still missing are the filter chamber and the mobile base so we can move this whole thing around. And in this video I will show you how to make them. The finished machine looks like this. And I know it's a long video but I would really recommend you to watch till the end because in my opinion the best part comes near the end. You will see. And of course there are a lot of outtakes. First of all, this bucket needs some wheels, because when it's full and you have to empty it, it's much easier to do so if it has some wheels on the bottom. So now let's just... wait... what? Didn't I just... well, whatever. Let's try it out. Alright, this is working, so let's move on. So the bucket, cyclone and blower get stacked on top of each other and now there needs to be a frame that holds the pieces together as well as holding a filter box which in the end should look like this. A little side note is that this whole machine is built around these filters. Back in summer 2015 when I designed it I knew which filters I wanted to use. So I started with those and built a dust collector around them. So this is the wooden frame I need to build. Of course with some wheels and panels. I laid the pieces out flat to get the most efficient use out of my stock as well as having a cut list in the shop. That made for quick layout work and I also could work around some knots and defects. As I don't have the luxury of much space I can't fit something like a miter saw into my shop so I used a jigsaw to cut the rough length. The wood I'm using is commonly available in European hardware stores but 2x4s or 2x6s would work just as well. Because I'm using rough construction lumber, which is the cheapest to buy, jointing one face and edge is my next step. And then planning to final thickness. This frame only uses wood of equal dimensions, so you only have to do this preparation once with one setup. Unless you screw up later, like me. The second edge and final width is achieved with the single rib cut on the table saw. With a crosscut plate I square up the ends all at once and then cut to final length. Parts A, B and C will make the main frame and I will join parts A and B with box joints. Actually, box joints are more than overkill here, you'll see why in a second. They just make alignment a little easier. And the main frame now gets assembled like this. And the bucket fits. Great. Now you can also see why it's not really necessary to assemble the C-frame here with box joints, because most of the weight is supported by this piece here, which is part D. And now I show you a much easier method to join these two pieces here. Now for demonstration I'm just going to use some scrap wood, but just imagine these were the actual pieces, this being piece A and this being piece B. And what you need to make is you take piece B and drill three holes into it and then screw it together. You might need to clamp the pieces down so nothing can move and you get nice and smooth transitions here. The third hole gets drilled out to fit a dowel. Then remove the next screw and repeat. Now before you do the same thing for the third screw you should wait a few minutes until the glue sets or something like this could happen. Don't make my mistake here. Here are all the parts for the filter box and I again cut box joints for the corners, which are again not really necessary. This middle piece is going to be joined with the other method I showed earlier. And then here are the two filters. And then there are these pieces here, here, here and here. And then this whole assembly joins to the main frame like so. As you can see I already made some marks on the pieces and these marks tell me where to cut grooves to insert the panels and the filters. So here are all the pieces that need a groove and I marked on each one how long this groove needs to be and how wide it needs to be. So 
From here on, I shouldn't screw up. By flipping the piece around, the groove will be perfectly centered. I prefer the table saw over the router for this, because it's much faster. For stopped grooves, I made marks on the fence that tell me where the blade starts and ends. Safety people probably won't like this. For the not centered grooves, I just moved the fence until it was wide enough. The grooves for the filters though are easier to make on a rotor table with a big straight bit. I made a really shallow pass first and unpacked a filter to try to fit. Looks like my first setting was dead on. Then it was just a matter of cutting all the grooves to their designated depth with multiple passes. I again made marks on the fence for the stopped grooves. A quick dry assembly with both filters shows me if the grooves are deep enough. And the distance from here to here should be the same as from here to here. It looks like I'm dead on that. Once done, I added a decorative rounding to some pieces. And followed by the next dry assembly. Alright, looks like everything worked out. All the grooves are at the right location and line up. No groove is missing. But I just screwed up here. This rounding is supposed to be on the other side. I don't know why I did it. Here's the mark that told me where to cut away material. Yeah, so I had to go all the way back and go through the whole process of making a new one of these pieces, this time with the rounding on the right side. And now I can go and glue this thing together. I hate when that happens. Gluing box joints always looks kinda cool, but the only advantage here is that they are almost self-squaring. And they look cool. When the glue is dry, you should check if the filters still fit nicely into the frame. Because now it's still very simple to change something by making these grooves a little deeper. Next comes a little bit of chisel work, because for example here needs to be a nice and square corner for a filter, here needs to be a groove for a panel and all the other grooves also need to be finished. Now that all the chiseling work is done, I can attach this divider piece to the filter frame and I'm using the dowel and screw method I showed previously. I also make sure that the filters can move easily and I fasten everything in place. While that is drying, I can prepare the plywood panels. Again, my workshop isn't big enough to cut this big sheet on the table saw, so I have to use the jigsaw first. After that, I also cut the plexiglass to size. Now I can assemble the main frame, and I want to use dowel joinery for this. So two dowels per joint. And to help me do this, I'm gonna make a quick little jig. Just use a scrap piece of the stock I was using, drilled two holes in it, and screwed a little fence to it. If you don't have a drill press to drill the holes, you can just use a little guide block with a V-groove in it and that guides the drill bit straight. Now the way this jig is working is really simple. You just clamp it to your workbench, position your stock and clamp it. And then you can drill your holes. The dry fit looks pretty good, now I just have to repeat the same thing with glue. I put some sticks between the two frames to remain the spacing and keep them square. Alright, so the main frame is done and I also already put these supports in place. Only with screws yet because you will see later why. And now I can attach the filter frame. To attach it I again could use the dowling jig here, but it's already worn out quite a bit. These things don't last very long, especially if it's soft wood. So I made a new one, this time with 8mm dowels. And I can get away with that, because the filter box doesn't need to support anything but the filters.
I had a lot of difficulty with drilling the holes into the frames and it turned out that the holes in my little jig here were crooked and that just messed everything up. So what I did is I made another guide with holes bigger than the dowels and I put these over the other holes to enlarge them. That makes for a terrible dowel fit but at least I can align the pieces properly. And that also means that I have to use a little bit more glue and have to wait longer. And by a little bit more glue I mean a crap load more of it and by a little longer I mean one full day. At least I then had some time to edit this video. And here the frame is fully glued up. And the filters still fit, which is a good thing. The panel I just cut to size gets attached on top of the frame and the blower attaches on top of the panel. The blower needs to be at a very specific position on this panel and I get this position from my 3D model. I set the compass to the radius of this piece of pipe that fits the blower inlet. Now I just marked it on the panel. I also marked a bigger circle which I need later. The pipe should fit quite snugly into the hole. Next I screwed the panel into the frame and that also allowed me to bring the frame fully into square. Now I can take this piece of pipe and stick it through the hole and let it protrude just a little bit. And then I take the blower housing and set it on top of this pipe. The blower is also attached at a slight angle and I already marked where that is. It gets secured from below to locate all the screw positions and then the big circle can be cut out. This hole needs to be big enough so the cyclone can fit through. I took off the baffle of the cyclone so I'm able to screw the cyclone into the blower housing from the bottom. Next I need to make the 90 degree transition that connects the blower with the filter box. The pieces I am using are cut with my CNC, but if you don't have one, I show you some methods to make these pieces with paper templates. Just glue the template on, drill a hole at the mark and stick it onto a board with a pin. With a small router bit you now can cut your curved slot. A drill bit and a drill press would work too, but you have to be very careful not to break the bit. The easiest way is to cut the slot through with a saw and put a screw at the end after the panel got inserted. After screwing it to the blower I scored its position on the panel to locate the hole I need to cut into it. I cut close to the line with the jigsaw and finished with the file as well as creating a little recess. This plastic stuff is the same PET that I used for the blower and the cyclone wall. One end can now nicely fit into that recess. The filter box will have this service door on a hinge for cleaning and to be able to attach the hinge I need to glue this strip in place. Attaching the hinge is straightforward, I guess. I added these grooves into the door in which the overhanging filters can fit into. So when the door is shut, the filters are fully enclosed. There's also a alignment pin and hole for the middle piece that makes sure that everything is flush when it's closed. And it also supports it. And that's the filter box. Now if you watch really closely, you can see that the bucket doesn't fit underneath here. Well, that's because the wheels aren't attached yet. <laughs> Obviously there's still a gap between the bucket and the cyclone. So now comes, in my opinion, the best part of this whole build. 
the quick release mechanism for the bucket. I really thought long about this and had several ideas like some sort of toggle clamps with a hook or a ramp that the bucket could slide up. But then I had an idea with cam levers that's functional, easy to use, easily adjustable and really simple to make. And it works like this. Here's my prototype of the system. So the cam pushes up the block and the block then pushes up the bucket. I just let the CNC cut out all the parts for the cam levers, but a paper template would work just as well. The actual cam lever is built up from two parts which need to be glued together. While the glue is drying, I can take out these parts here so I can drill the holes for the mechanism. I mark the exact hole positions on these pieces and now I just need to drill them. The first hole fits a dowel and the hole from the other side fits a washer. I put them back in place and now I need to cut a short piece of dowel and drill holes in both ends. Then screw a big washer into one end. This then gets inserted into the frame and the cam gets attached here. In the end there should be no overhang so I can secure it with another screw and washer. So now I just mark where to cut it shorter. Next I made these blocks with the slots in them and I'm gonna attach them with these kinds of screws with a nice big flat head, some kind of furniture screws I think. I only could find them in this length so I had to cut them down a little bit but that's not a problem. And I screwed them into an undersized hole so that the screw can create its own threads and fits them really really tightly. I screw them tight and then back out a little bit so the block can move freely. Another piece of dowel connects the two cams. Next I added the ceiling to the cyclone and tried it out. Now my fit of the bucket is just tight enough so it can't wiggle around. But I would like it to be a little tighter. And with this system it's really easy to do. So if the fit was too tight you just have to cut a little piece off of the block. And if it's too loose you just need to make a new block or glue a little piece on top. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now when the bucket is pushed up that puts a lot of pressure into the cyclone and especially this thin wall which is not really ideal. So to compensate for that I made these blocks to go here and here and they can take the pressure. Now if the lifting mechanism was adjusted right but you can't slide in the bucket because it's hitting these blocks, that can also be adjusted. And you do so by changing the thickness of the spacer pieces of the wheels. And that's the whole reason why these spacer pieces are there. I also added some more of this plastic stuff around here and that's for positioning the bucket at the right spot every time. Then I rounded and sanded everything that I could think of, put two coats of polyurethane on all parts and sealed everything with silicone and weather stripping to make it airtight. Now for the filter I thought it would be good to have some kind of secondary filter in front of them which would take up most of the dust and extend the lifetime of this one. Something similar that I did for my big dust collector. And all I did there is taking some cooker hood filter stuff, cut it to the size of the filter and that's it. But the problem there is the low surface area because for good air filtration you need a lot of surface area. And the way to get more surface area is to make the filters pleated like this one. So then I went back to the store and found another type of cooker hood filter which was flat. And I cut it apart and sewed it together to make a long piece and then fold it. And that worked really well. I can just lay this on top of the filter and then I need something to hold it in place and therefore I solder together this frame out of wire and it fits over the individual pleats. And that's it. Unfolded this filter was about 93 centimeters long and now it's 33 centimeters long so I almost tripled the filter area. 
I also installed this Airstream deflector right here because without it most of the air would only hit this part of the top filter, which is not good for this part. And this deflector just spreads the whole airflow over the whole filter box. And now, finally, it's done. Let's suck up some dust. At first I hooked it up to the table saw and made a few rip cuts and as you can see, this works great. Oh no! The suction is big enough to lift up the bucket while the intake is not blocked. So this is the finished small dust collector. I really couldn't be happier with how everything turned out. Really, everything turned out the way I wanted it to, and that really doesn't happen that often. And especially I like the quick release for the bucket. It's compact and has really good filters in it, and it's actually not that loud. I guess that's it. The filters shouldn't pinch and as you can see they do. So I need to make the grooves a tiny little bit deeper. Alright, looks like everything worked out. All the grooves are at the light right right. right. All right, looks like everything worked out. All the grooves are at the right right. Next, I need to make the 90 degree transition. Next, I need to make the 90 degree degree. Ah! It was at this moment that I knew I fucked up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I added these grooves into the door in which the overhanging fillers filters so that the screw can create its own threads. Shit. I could just lay this on. I can just lay this. Yeah. When the bucket is pushed up that puts a lot of pressure onto the cyclone and especially on this thin wall which, which is not ideal.